The level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. I was terrified out there. Were you really? Yeah. You just got MJ? Yeah. These are the times Michael Jordan humiliated his opponents. I saw when I was in college on TV, it's just like really real. And what Jordan did to Alonzo Mourning should get him thrown in jail for life. Pippen gets it to Jordan. Michael challenges and Look at his tongue out over Alonzo Mourning. Yes! And after he comes down, he says, Yahoo! Damn, this man Jordan is a bona fide psycho. I mean, the dude once completely humiliated a child just to show that he was the GOAT. Yeah, that child was OJ Mayo, the top ranked high school player in the country in 2006. OJ received a personal invitation to attend Michael Jordan's flight school basketball camp, which offered young athletes the opportunity to learn directly from the basketball legend himself. Yo, it's the Michael Jordan flight school. Learn how to increase your hang time. Learn how to dazzle defenses. Learn how to wear really great sneakers. It will be hard to imagine any young athlete turning down such an incredible opportunity. And for OJ, attending Jordan's basketball camp was a dream come true. OJ eagerly packed his bags and flew to Cali, excited to learn from the GOAT. But little did he know that this camp will soon turn into a nightmare for him. Yeah, I'm playing in my, uh, my camp against to OJ Mayo. He was a top high school kid coming out. In front of my camp. He starts this thing about, uh, you can't guard me, you can't do this. You know, I got my campus here, so I obviously I can't really go where I want to go because of my camp. And then uh, he said, okay, now let me handle my business. And he looked me in my face and said, I'm like, what you mean? So he said, I need all the campers, everybody to leave, let's clear the gym. From this point on, it's a lesson. And from that point on, it was a lesson. He never won a game, I posted him up, I did everything. Hit the famous fadeaway on me, and then, uh, then he said, hey, young fella, let me tell you something. You may be the best high school player, but I'm the best player in the world. Jordan, you ain't have to do the kid dirty like that. Looks like OJ got off easy compared to how dirty MJ does most NBA players, because Jordan has been humiliating the same NBA player for 40 plus years, and it began back in college. On March 29, 1982, Jordan's North Carolina Tar Heels faced off against Patrick Ewing's Georgetown Hoyas in the NCAA championship. With only 17 seconds left on the clock and his team trailing by one point, Jordan received the ball and proceeded to make history. Jordan's iconic game-winning shot not only sent Ewing and the Hoyas home, but it also marked the beginning of a lifetime of humiliation for Ewing. Once they both entered the NBA, Jordan seized every opportunity to dominate Ewing and make him his bitch. Jordan had monster blocks and would even scream in Ewing's face, and he defeated Ewing's team in five consecutive playoff series. In 1991, Jordan added to the embarrassment by posterizing Ewing with one of the most memorable dunks in NBA history. On the left, gets chased into the corner, comes right back. No! You through the foul! Yes! Wow! Oh, powerhouse, JD! There's a poster play! But hey, it's all good, because in 2002, Ewing retired from the NBA and was finally able to escape MJ's death grip, or at least that's what he thought. He's been talking trash from the first day that I met him, and he still continues to talk trash, telling me that I, that I have never beat him right now. I mean, you guys met as high school recruits. That's a long time. That's decades and decades of trash talk, Patrick. Oh, yes, and it, it still has a job. Even today, if I, if I call him right now, he'll, he'll still be talking trash to me. That man Ewing never did anything to MJ, and he still got embarrassed. But uh, Reggie Miller, on the other hand, wasn't as fortunate as Ewing, as he made the grave mistake of disrespecting Michael Jordan early in his NBA career. In 1987, during a preseason game against the Bulls, Miller, in his rookie year, had a stellar performance scoring 10 points over Jordan and shutting him down to just four points by the end of the first half. Miller started feeling himself and began trash talking Jordan, believing he could take on the GOAT. My rookie year, uh -huh. we were playing the Chicago Bulls and this is Michael Jordan's third or fourth year in. Okay. Chuck Person, who's on my team, who's a trash talker as well, is like, can you believe Michael Jordan? The guy everyone's talking about, who's supposed to be able to walk on water. You're out here killing them, Reg. This is in the first half. He's like, you should be talking to him. He's like, you know, you're right. Michael, who do you think you are? <laughs> the great Michael Jordan? That's right, there's a new kid on town, right? He kind of looks at me and starts shaking his head. So at half, 
have 10 and he has four points, right? I'm doing all this talking. He's like, okay. End of the game in the second half, he ended up with 44. <laughs> and I ended up with 12. <laughs> and as he's walking off, he's like, be sure and be careful. You never talk to black Jesus like that. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Black Jesus. I'm so sorry. Did you ever do it again? Never to Michael Jordan. Never to Michael. Yeah, Reggie wrote a check that his ass couldn't cash. This man Jordan is the petty king. And one time Jordan came out of retirement just to humiliate this player. In 99, most players were thinking the man above they didn't have to square off with MJ anymore. But there was this one dude who for some reason felt different. Chicago Bulls guard Corey Benjamin. Corey was quoted as saying, I'm sorry Mike retired because I was looking forward to beating him one on one. But luckily, Jordan was unaware of Corey's earlier comments and continued to turn up with his tequila and cigars. However, Benjamin did not stop there and spent the next few months trash talking Jordan to his teammates, claiming that Jordan was washed up and could not beat him one on one. Benjamin's disrespectful behavior finally caught up with him during a Bulls practice where he made the grave mistake of stealing a teammate's cell phone and using it to call Jordan, saying the following. Hey, you know, I say a little bit too much. What you say? What you say? What you say? I can get you. And he said, what? I said, yeah, I want that. He said, all right, I'll be at your practice Monday morning. I'm like, yeah, right. Man, we flew back to Chicago. We broke practice. Bulls on three. Bulls. Guess who walked in the door? MJ walked in the door, Chris. <laughs> I then took a dump on myself. Yeah, Corey messed up big time. And it was at this practice where Corey was put out of his misery. This guy Jordan definitely has some screws missing and he'll even humiliate those he loves most. In the 90s, Jordan was inseparable from Charles Barkley. The two were best friends. But in 1993, everything changed when they faced off in the NBA Finals. Before game four, Jordan invited Barkley to a round of golf and gifted him $20,000 diamond earrings. On the surface, this seemed like a kind gesture, but it was all a part of Jordan's sinister plan to manipulate Barkley. Jordan later told his assistant coach his true motive. Charles won't get in my way the rest of the series. What's 20,000 to me? He thinks we're great friends. I hate that fact. That fuck. It's a truly despicable move, but it worked. In the next game, Jordan humiliated Barkley in front of the entire world. Seven second disparity between the shot clock and the game clock. Jordan, yes, and it counts. How about Michael Jordan? It was time for that. That night, Jordan scored 55 points, and a few days later, he sent Barkley home and he won his third ring. It's harsh to do that to your friend, but if we're talking about ruthlessness, we have to mention what Jordan did to Dikembe Mutombo. Jordan hit him with the most humiliating poster dunk of his NBA career. In the 90s, Jordan was dominating the entire league, dunking on everyone except one player, the seven foot two monster, Dikembe Mutombo. And no matter how hard Jordan tried, he could never dunk on Mutombo's happy ass. So in 1997, Dikembe rubbed it in. Got me yet, huh? Mike, hey, hey, don't even try it. You want me to go call Scotty? You have to call Scotty. Call boy. We gonna call Scotty for? I haven't got you recently. Yeah, I agree with no, that. You haven't got me in six years. One, two, three, just go and say. Yeah, so Dikembe was talking big shit, believing that Jordan would never dunk on him. But a few months later, when the two met in the playoffs, Jordan got his get back. But he finally got his dunk on Mount Matumbo. He never dunked on you. He never put you on the highlight. No. No. This 
say I would love to get you in my poster, but it's not happening. It's not going to happen. Jordan got the last laugh as he hit Mutombo with the most humiliating poster dunk of his career, all while eliminating them from the playoffs at the same damn time. Although Dikembe's poster dunk was humiliating, it pales in comparison to what Jordan did to Isaiah Thomas, which ruined his entire legacy. In the late 80s, Jordan despised Thomas because his Pistons had eliminated him from the playoffs three seasons in a row and ridiculed him with plays such as this. But despite all the losses Jordan endured, he made sure to show respect by shaking Isaiah's hand after every game. But in 1991, things took a turn for the worst during their fourth consecutive playoff matchup, with Jordan's Bulls only eight seconds away from finally eliminating the Pistons. Isaiah Thomas did the unthinkable by walking off the court, leaving MJ hanging. Two years in a row, we shook their hands when they beat us. There was a certain respect to the game that we paid to them. That's sportsmanship. No matter how much it hurts, and believe me, it fucking hurts. The fury in Jordan's eyes was evident, and he knew that he wanted revenge. From that moment on, he started scheming, and after a few months, he came up with a devious plan to get Isaiah banned from the 1992 Olympic Dream Team, which was the most legendary squad ever. Jordan, being the best player of all time, knew that Team USA would do anything for him. During a recruiting call with the Olympic Committee, Jordan agreed to play on one condition, that Isaiah would not be a part of the team. And they called me to ask me to play. Rob couldn't call me. I said, Rob, I won't play because I did come to the team. Leaked audio confirmed that Jordan was responsible for getting Isaiah banned from the Dream Team, causing him to miss out on a gold medal and a place in basketball history, all because of a handshake. To this day, Isaiah still regrets the incident. Shit, we had been bigger. Yeah. Yeah, there's only one NBA player who has made Jordan regret humiliating him, Kobe Bryant. During Jordan's final season in the NBA, he led the Wizards to a one-point win over the Lakers. Instead of simply accepting the victory and moving on, Jordan wanted to rub it in Kobe's face one last time. After the game, he walked up to Kobe, looked him in the eyes, and said, You can put on my shoes all you want, but you're never going to feel them. This humiliated Kobe, and he became determined to get back at his idol. He locked himself in the gym, stopped talking to his teammates, and practiced relentlessly until March of 2003, when he finally put Michael Jordan in his place during their final matchup ever. Fortunate tonight, Kobe's first jumper, that's good. Long jumper, three-pointer, Kobe Bryant, he is unbelievable. Kobe's fadeaway good. It is, they trail now by one, here's his jumper, and that's the first lead of the night for Los Angeles. Seven for 12 from the field has Kobe again. Oh my! Three pointer number seven for Kobe Bryant. Kobe guarded by Lou. Kobe's long jumper. Oh no! That night, Kobe was so determined, he dropped 42 points on Jordan's head in the first half alone. By the end of the game, he had put a 55 on Jordan cementing his passing of the torch from one go to another. Damn, that's some dope ass shit, man. But you know what's even more dope? This video right here. Let's keep this party going.